Look as I went in and I went in and uh, worked on this a little bit. I had trouble with these. They used to be a metal uh, a metal uh, thing in here. Of course I cut it out. Very difficult to get the cuts exactly where I want them so I just went and bent them up. But uh, so these bricks are resting on a metal a metal shelf there. Get that thing doesn't even have to be there, but it's hard to take out with the tools that I have, so I just just cut it out the best I could. And added this plate here with these legs. And now at the bottom, well, it was a fire chamber. I filled it full of rocks. And uh, full of rocks like that, it really becomes a heat sink chamber for hot air that's going to come in from that tube right there. So that's just going to blow air into this into these rocks and heat them up and then from there they'll just it'll just rise actually what it'll do is <clears throat> the hot air rises behind this you can see there's a gap right here the gap right there all the way around and then so that heat just rises it's going to rise sort of behind these rides along this wall right right along this wall rise up and hit that lip and then on up all the way up all the way around so that's the way that works so it cooks really pretty evenly yeah, the only exception is the door here. If I had a heat sink on this door, it'd be kind of nice, but uh, it works. I have a little rotist. It's got a rotisserie in it, so I can just turn it a little bit every once in a while, and that works. So when I want to use charcoal, I can just pull those out. Pull those rocks out, basically. I'm going to figure out exactly how I want to cap these off because I'm not quite sure yet. I'll just put a little some sort of plug. Some sort of, um, you know, I, I can use wood. I just use a stick and plug them up, but But I'll probably have to, maybe I'll make little pegs and just kind of plug them in there. Just tap some pegs in there and then I can just pull them right back out when I want to pull those rocks out. If I want to, you know, use the uh, charcoal. <clears throat> So it's pretty much lined with block now, and it goes up as far as it can go up. Get the rotisserie up there. I can't go up any higher because of the rotisserie that's up in there. Let's see, you can see the rotisserie. Yep, you can see it up there. Can't really go any higher with the bricks. So. That's it. So it looks like I got a little put a little lip there like over here and so it's got a little edge there to uh, block the airflow. 
Could I need one probably between here and here? I'm not sure. Might be okay the way it is, just have to get all out of it. Have to get all the airflow that's going through these holes and through these cracks stopped up because it all has to come from the solar heater. So, and the more, the better the, the better these are sealed off, the better that situation is going to be. Because, you know, obviously, the airflow that's coming in through those little portholes is, you know, going to be probably 70 you know, 80 to 90 degrees, you know, somewhere in there, or 100, just 105 here now, during the summer, at least, yeah, probably, it was like a week or two weeks, so it's over 100 degrees here, so it's pretty hot. So as much of that as we can get stopped up. You know, there's a little bit of gap here. I'm going to tighten this thing up. It's going to tighten up a little bit, though. It's really not too bad. You see a little part right there, a little edge right there that I can uh, file off of there, which is what I'll do, get the file out here, start filing, get a strip in here so I can cover that gap, and, and uh, I'm not sure I'm going to worry about this, pretty, pretty tight there. I might, I might have to, I might have to, to do that too. It just can't be very much air coming into the system anywhere else from the, that, uh, that hot box. At any rate, I have a solar cooker there. Even if it doesn't work for this, I still have a solar cooker there. You know? But even if it doesn't, if I can't pick them up, up enough heat through those pipes, which I know I can, I know I can get it up to 200 easily. You know? But that's, that's a long... That's kind of a long way for cooking. 300 is really, really ideal. 300 is you know, pretty much my favorite cooking temperature. So. But 200, oh, two, 250. Let's see, two, it has to be above boiling. You gotta put it above boiling temperature, so that's that's the way that goes. Boil it up. Boil it till all of the germs or whatever, parasites, anything like that, whatever. So this looks pretty good. Oh, it's 
starting to look a lot better. So if I get a good day, I may be testing this thing. See how it I didn't really do a, as I know I can get, I know if the air flows, I know if it's going to be a natural flow, but flow through naturally, get really no problem, um, really no problem at all. So what I'm thinking is, you know, natural airflow is what's really going to make this thing fly because, or just a tiny bit, it's just air, just a fan that just gets it sort of weeping through there. And uh, if it never has to turn off, it's fine because, you know, but very, very very slight amount of air just to push it just enough to get it flowing through just barely and then once the natural flow just kind of starts to take over then and all I have to do to get that natural flow tape tape to go is just basically just tip it is that will be tipped towards the Sun is that Thing will be tipped out that way in the morning and uh, tipped the other way in the afternoon so it'll be tipped towards the east and in the afternoon tip it towards the west except there's this big tree here so actually that unit We'll be better off in back of this so I clear that area out there. Oh, I should have put it on a should have put it on a lazy susan so I could rotate it. That would have been perfect, but I'm not going to do that now. It needs to rotate. But actually, it does rotate. So. And I'll be able to pick the lid up off of it and turn it around the other way. So it works. It'll work. It'll work perfect. Actually, it'll work quite ideally. But I was thinking if I have it in back here the long way, it's going to get most of the sun, except for in the morning the sun's out that way, you know, out that way. So, the way it is, and then it sets like in back of that mountain there. So it's kind of funky. It seems like it comes up over there. So that means the window would be turned towards me. And uh, then but I would say for the most part of the day, it's better off if it's setting at back of this and uh, lengthwise it would be east-west. And then for most of the day, I wouldn't have to adjust it at all, really. So I think that's the way it's gonna be. In fact, I think it'll work really well that way. So we'll clean off that area in back there, get that all prepped. 
get that unit out here. The first thing that needs to be done is to, go is to plug these holes and then, and then get those gaps. I'm going to put a backup strip behind these gaps right here. Then I could say that I've done it right, I think. So I'll do a little filing. So I guess I get started on that.